Well, hello, folks. Um, I'm recovering from surgery, and I'm on some uh, some pretty powerful painkillers. So if I stumble on any of this part of the video, just please forgive me. But today we're going to um, put this kit together. This little Chinese uh, Chinese radio is a CF 210 SP. Let's crack this guy open and. See what kind of goodies are in here. You know, I saw somebody put this kit together um, a few years ago on YouTube. I can't really remember anything about it. I just saw it, I think, on Amazon, and it was really cheap. It had looked like it had a good bit of components with it. Um, if I can remember, it's um, it's all based it's IC it's all based on ICs. Of course, this is our cover plate here. It's cheap knockoff of Panasonic, and we got our circuit board. And it's pretty cheap. Um. I think this is maybe FR3 material. I'm not real sure about that. It definitely doesn't look or doesn't have the paper smell, so it's not FR1 or FR2. But it's definitely not FR4. And our paperwork. Well, boy, this is real helpful. It's all in Chinese. There is no Chinglish shown here at all. Let's see, they... Yeah, they do give me a schematic to go by. Let me see what kind of legend we have printed on this board. Alright, so yeah, we do have a decent legend, so I can put this guy together. I won't have to really trace it down and go over the schematics too well. I mean, too good. Um... Yeah, it's, it's not very complicated. Um, looks like we have an IC here that's, yeah, it's going to run all the, um, do all the, the hard work that, let's see, the FM. There's our capacitor with our inductors. Um, this is going to be our amplifier circuit right here, the amplification part of it. It goes out to the speaker, look like headphone jack. This is our AM side, which is another IC uh, 7642. And our amp amplifier here is uh, 2822, and then the 9088. I'm not familiar with any of these, really, of these ICs. And let's see. Yeah, there's nothing very complicated about this circuit. Just a simple switch to switch it over from the AM FM side here. Battery to the volume. It feeds in. Okay, yeah. Alright. It doesn't look too bad. Okay, let's see what kind of components are in here. Antenna circuit board. Our case, this is our speaker. It comes out. What is that, an 8 ohm, half watt? Yep. And our little bag of goodies. There is a bunch of them. There's our little ferrite rod. I'm thinking this is our capacitor, our just or variable capacitor. That's going to be a potentiometer. And our coil for the antenna. 
and we have an IC here. Speaking of IC, I can't see what this says. Let me look through that loop here. Okay, that's, I believe that's going to be the little amplifier. That's going to be our headphone jack. We said ferrite rod. Like we got some wires. For the battery terminal. Knobs, bunch of resistors, some electrolytic capacitors, little ceramic capacitors. Selector switch. Uh-oh. What is this guy? This looks like some real tiny SMD. I didn't know there was going to be SMD on here. Well, it looks like he goes right here. And that's the 9088. I think that is the main radio I see. Probably for the FM side. 9088, yep. Alright, I'm not a big fan of SMD. I just... You know, I grew up with the old school stuff. It's a little difficult for us older people to solder on, but we'll get it done. Looks like we had a little transistor. Are we missing our AMIC? Let me look through here. Like I said, and sort these parts out. I think we might be missing a part. Okay, I did a parts inventory here and everything is here. Except for, I couldn't verify this stuff because it's just all gibberish. I have no clue what that is. But, you know, that I can read the schematics and I looked on that and checked with everything and verified it on the circuit board and it's the kit seems to be complete and I was wrong I thought this was a transistor um, this is not a transistor this little 7a with a TA 7642 it's a um, little AMIC you don't have to forgive me you know, I haven't put one of these radio kits together since I'm probably going to say since the 1980s the last time I put a radio kit together. So I haven't been really kept up on the technology. But let me I'm gonna show you something else. Let me pull the, the big eye loop down and I'll show you the poor quality of this circuit board. Alright, here's the circuit board. As you can see here the, the mask in the through hole doesn't line up very well. You don't really have too much copper to even attach solder on right here. But that's more just to anchor the components. I mean, that'll be okay. Which everything on this board is, is I could say, I mean, you can say it acceptable at best. But you can see with the registry, didn't even line up with the holes. I mean, look how horrible that is. Some of the holes they've even blown out. But one of the bigger concerns here is what they call a skipping. And that's where the ink doesn't lay down in between traces. And this will be fine because if I verified, I looked through another eye loop. And you do have ink on the opposite side of the skip trace. So there's there can't be a, um, an open, I mean a short, in between the traces here. And if there is a problem where you see one and the ink is skipped on both sides of the trace, you just put some fingernail polish on it. But this also being a low voltage, low current board, it's really no concern. Okay, the first thing we're doing is we're going to put this uh, little SMD chip on here. There is a notch in the corner of the SMD chip, which signifies it lines up with the notch that was printed on the board. I probably should have got a close-up video of that. But then what I did was um, just tack this corner down, and then I took my eye loop and verified everything lines up. And then I'm just going to come by and try to do my best to solder all these little legs in. 
wish me luck. Okay, I got the little chip on. I uh, looked at it through my little hand loop here, and uh, everything looks okay, but just to be sure, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a continuity test on it. Um, and if all that checks out fine, then we're going to start populating the board with the other components. Uh, probably starting out with the resistors first. They'll go on this side. Um, and then we'll go with probably ceramic capacitors and uh, the other ICs and work our way up. Okay, one thing about this board here is um, some of the resistors, if you can see, they're marked right here by the circle. Um, these resistors, you need to put them in differently. You want to fold it like so and... stick them in where they're sticking up just like that also while you're doing the circuit board you're gonna run into some areas right here where the your pads are real close together when you go to solder this in uh, be careful and not to fill your holes up with uh, solder because this uh, board's real cheap and you put a lot of heat on it you're going to start uh, peeling the trace of the adhesive will come loose and the traces are going to start peeling away Okay, I noticed here this um, capacitor that goes in here, ceramic capacitors. You can see the holes for it pretty long, so you're going to have to really spread your leads out to get them to, to fit into there. So keep in mind of that. Next, we're going to do our inductors. Um, we got our 8.5 turn inductor goes here. I got two holes. I'm not real sure what that's about. I guess fits better one way. Hopefully they I wouldn't think they would want us to stretch it out. I'm not real sure. You really don't want to do that. You want to, yeah, you don't want to bend these little guys and keep them exactly the way they are. We got uh, the other one here, seven and a half turns. And I'm, now that I'm looking at it also here, this um, part of the board here is for the LED. You can see the diode, this little LED symbol here. Uh, but it doesn't tell us which side is the anode or the cathode. And I'll trace it down. I'm thinking that this point here is going to be the cathode because that looks like ground but I'll trace it down here so and I'll get back with you and let you know okay so this is your negative side this is your positive side so the one down here at the bottom closest to this inductor here is going to be your uh, anode your positive and that is your cathode negative right there and like I said here on our diode if you see the longer leg here that's the anode and then the short leg is the cathode okay I got the LED and the inductor soldered in um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and just finish soldering all the components on and I'll start recording if I see anything unique or messed up or any reason to stop to show you all right, almost got the whole board put together and notice we have a jumper wire that goes in right here. So what I'm going to do is take one of these little small leads I cut off and we'll just bend it over and solder it in. Okay, I was getting ready to solder the speaker in. I don't know if you can see on there, but yeah, it is marked positive and negative. So I was trying to hook it up correctly. And there is no markings on here whatsoever. Um, I mean, it's really not a big deal. But I was looking up the IC here, this uh, amplifier, it's TDA uh, 28, I mean, yeah, 2822. And I looked at it. Um, if you look on the schematics here, the um, way this thing is laid out, the output is going to be pin 1 and pin 4. I mean, I'm sorry, pin 1 and pin 3. And your VCC um, is a pin 2. And then 4 is your ground. And also, 
five and eight are ground for your input, and that leaves your inputs to be uh, seven and six. So here's your inputs, and if you look at it, it's being bridged right through here with uh, your outputs being one and, and three. They're being bridged together, and all the grounds are tied in together. So it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to wire in the... Um, the speaker ground the negative side to the headphone jack and then I'm going to wire in the positive side right here which is going to be on the circuit board if you look this is where I'm putting the positive in and this is where I'll tie the negative in okay right here for our antenna these are where we should solder them in at and um, they do have holes through the circuit board so I'm pretty sure that the wire should go through through here and through this hole and if you look very closely I don't know if you can see it I doubt you can but they are pretend I don't know if yours are going to be if not you really do need to scrape the varnish off the wires and uh, pretend those wires all right and here's a mistake I made if I wanted to, uh, the wire to go through the hole I already put the capacitor on so I'm just going to solder these up Connect the wires. Like I said, I'm going to hot snot all these. These wires are real cheap. Pretty sure they're going to come out if with any movement. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some hot glue on all that to get some strain relief. Okay, we're going to do ourselves a test run here. I got it hooked up to the power supply. Whoa, she's alive. Pets. Okay, that's the volume. This is. Well, that's the AM side. I can't really get anything with FM. I don't have the antenna hooked up, so. Well, I know it works, so another thing, I, I live down, I live in the area that us good old boys would call a holler. Um, I live in a ravine down by a river, and it's, we, we, we live pretty far down. I don't know what the, what we are compared to sea level, but we don't get radio waves too well here. Radio stations don't pick up. And I really don't want to have to drive down the road just to pick up a radio station with this guy. Um, let me put it together in the case and we'll throw some, uh, some AA batteries in it and see if it's, all this stuff I'm getting is not interference from the lights, power supply and stuff on the AM side. And I'll retest it. Okay, here's the radio. It is playing. I'm in my backyard in the corner of the backyard. <laughs> Sorry about all the stuff growing on the fence. I'll tell you, just like I told my wife, I'll get to it. Um, it's, reception's horrible. It's mainly because of where I live. Um, this thing is a pain in the butt to get this case together. But yeah, that's about all I can get on it. Nothing on the AM. All right, my final thoughts on this radio. Uh, if you are a beginner, you probably need to stay away from this. For the price, uh, I think I paid under ten dollars for it. You, you know, it, it's not bad, I guess, for ten dollars. It probably pick up better if I was in the city. I could shoot you know, a signal in it and fine tune it and get it to perform better. I also think the coils are a little bit, a little bit, uh, bent on it. But yeah, you know, the directions are horrible. The hardest part of putting the kit together is actually putting the case together. Uh, I actually, I'm more interested in that, uh, AM, um, IC and also the amplifier IC. So I may pull it out and peel around with it. But I hope you like this video. Uh, give me a thumbs up and I need more subscribers. So subscribe and also y'all have a nice day.